الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى يا ربي لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم ارجني عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وتوفنا على ملته وأوردنا حوضه وأسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظم وبعدها أبدا رب الشحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأغضة من لساني أفقه قولي ثم أما بعد مدي رسبكت بروز and sisters this is the first جمعة in the new uh, year the Islamic calendar and the month of المحرم is the first month in the Islamic calendar um, and it is very unique month uh, because first it is one of the four holy months according to the Quran and the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in Surah Tawbah indeed the number of months with Allah is 12 lunar months in the register of Allah from the day he created the heavens and the earth of these four are sacred the month of Muharram is one of these four sacred months that was the tradition and the Sharia of Ibrahim alayhi salam and that's why Arabs actually used to respect this tradition Islam did not begin this tradition, Islam actually continued this tradition of respecting the um, uh, sanctity of these four months so in these four months uh, people cannot fight each other, it's a month of, of peace among these um, um, four months is the month of Al-Muharram, it's one of the four holy and sacred months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and so do not wrong yourselves during them. And the ulama talk about them, talk about the four holy months or the entire 12 months. Do not wrong yourself, period. And Abbas is with the opinion that do not wrong yourself in the 12 months, but specifically in these four months you have to um, exert more effort to do good deeds and to stay away from sins. Um, the Prophet ﷺ talked about the special um, uh, uh, excellence of this month, holiness of this month, when he said in Sahih Muslim, he said the best of fasting after Ramadan is fasting Allah's month of the Muharram. And the ulama said actually from a grammatical perspective to say Allah's month, um, it, it's, it shows how holy and sacred this month is. Like when you say Baytullah, right? The house of Allah. And this means that this place is a sacred and holy uh, place. That has special value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying the same thing about the month of Al-Muharram. He called it the month of Allah. In other narration that you call Al-Muharram. So in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this month is a holy month. And the best fasting uh, is to fast during the month of Al-Muharram. Other hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, <coughs> um, um, which uh, prayer was most excellent after the five daily prayers, the obligatory prayers, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, um, the best prayer after the uh, uh, obligatory prayers is the prayer offered in the middle of the night, referring to Qiyam al-Layl. And the best fasting, after Ramadan is the fasting in the month of, uh, uh, of God's month that we call Al-Muharram. So generally speaking, the month of Al-Muharram is a very unique uh, month um, from Islamic uh, uh, perspective. And also it is a special month because of the 10th uh, day of Al-Muharram, uh, known as Ashura. The word Ashura comes from Arabic word Ashura, means 10. So the 10th day of Al-Muharram is also a very special day, um, uh, interestingly for both Muslim and Jews. Um, Yom, Yom Kippur uh, is the holiest day um, in the Jewish tradition in which they focus on repentance um, and asking God for forgiveness and they fast for almost 25 hours from the sunset of the day before until the sunset of the uh, next day. So. And this is basically because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and the tribe of Israel from Pharaoh and he destroyed Pharaoh. Uh, we all know the story. So when the Prophet came to Al-Madinah, he asked uh, why uh, the Jews fast 
uh, on this day they told him this is because they celebrate the safety of Musa and the Israelites. And the Prophet ﷺ made this um, uh, comment when he said that we have more of a right to Musa. We are closer to Musa than the, the Jews. And that's very profound because we should think about how is, what was the Islamic attitude towards others. Muslims came from many places, but mainly from Mecca to Al Medina. Al Medina was a multicultural, multi religious place. We have Muslims, you have um, three um, big Jewish tribes, and you have uh, a polytheist Arabs, who are still worshipping idols. And of course, Munafiqun do not belong to any, they have their own unique category. But it's a multicultural place, and the Prophet ﷺ was the leader of Medina. And Islam, as usual, when Islam spreads and goes everywhere, we need to look carefully at the Islamic approach to different cultures and religions. The main theme of Islamic approach or attitude towards others is that peaceful coexistence. And this approach was fully aware about the commonality between Islam, Muslims, and this new land, new culture, new tradition, new religion. At the same time, this approach was extremely aware of the points of differences. And this is exactly what we need to do here in our American Muslim context. We will find plenty of commonalities between Islam, our Islamic tradition, and other traditions. And we have to also be fully aware about the differences. Knowing the commonality was very uh, clear in, in Islamic tradition when the Prophet ﷺ came to Al Medina, focusing on the commonality between Muslim and Jews, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one God, believing in Musa alayhi salam, believing in the, uh, you know, um, the old prophets who came before Muhammad sallallahu uh, alayhi wa ethical values, uh, preparation for the day of judgment. All these were common values, not only that Islam actually emphasized the importance of cl clarifying and identifying these points of agreement. In Medina, Muslims have to give their back to al Kaaba and face Jerusalem. That was the Qibla of the Jews. And this brought a lot of debate. If our Qibla, the Jews said, is the right Qibla, so why, why do we have different religion? Right? So if we are all the same, so let's be all the same. But it's not that simple. There are a lot of points of, of differences. A lot of points of difference. That's why Quran repeatedly talked to and about the people of the book. Ya ahl al kitab, ya ahl al kitab, lima takfuruna bi ayat Allahi wa antum tashhadud. Ya ahl al kitab, lima tasudduna an sabil Allahi man ama tabuna hajjaj wa antum shuhada. Allah talked to the people of the book. Yeah, you're, you're supposed to be the first people to recognize Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, he is the prophet that your book was talking about. So Muslims did not fully assimilate with others and did not fully reject. This wholesale acceptance or wholesale rejection was not the Islamic attitude. The attitude was recognizing, identifying the points of agreement, identifying the point of differences, right? And building Islamic, unique Islamic identity. And this approach was a selective approach, we can call it. A selective approach based on a clear point of reference, based on the Islamic values, ethical values, based on the source of knowledge for us as Muslims, the book of Allah and the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Sometimes we tend to say, yeah, we are all the same, same God, same book, same message, same religion. Wrong. We are not the same, despite the fact that there are plenty of commonalities. And again, these commonalities brought a lot of debate back then and still up until now. Many believe that Islam is nothing but, you know, a modified version of, of Christianity and Judaism. Like many other uh, people try to imitate the Bible and claim our prophets. That's the, the main theme there. Islam is not authentic. It's not uh, genuinely coming from God they believe. But for us as Muslims, we have to be clear about what's common. And we also have to be, not to be shy, to talk about the differences. Because this is what 
makes us who we are. We are not Jews, we are not Christians, but we believe that we have more right to Ibrahim, we have more right to Musa, and more right to Isa than anybody else. Because we believe in them all, we respect them all, we follow them all, we are we consider ourselves the followers of Ibrahim and the followers of Musa and Isa and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's why the kalima of shahada says, "La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." And by accepting Muhammad, you automatically accept everybody who came before him. Facing the same qibla was a sign of identifying the points of agreement. Let's find points of agreement. That was the Islamic attitude. You know what? We have so many things in common. Yeah, there are plenty of differences. As much as Jesus, peace be upon him, was, was very unhappy with the Jewish tradition in his time, 600 years before Muhammad. He was sent, as he said clearly, that I'm not here to contradict the law of God or the book of God that he revealed to Musa. I came to confirm it because you guys went so far away from it. So Isa's job, sallallahu alayhi wa is to bring people back to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Musa preached. That's why there's no need to establish new law. The law was there. Nothing new. Let's go back to the authentic Surat al-Mustaqeem. And Muhammad sallallahu came to do the same thing 600 years after Isa. There was no way humanity could find their way to Allah unless Allah sends a new messenger with a new message. Of course, you will find plenty of commonalities. Absolutely. But we also, Islam was very clear about identifying the point of disagreement, differences. The religion, the authentic message of Musa had been changed. The authentic message of Isa had been changed. So Muhammad وسلم, came with the final word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fix these problems that people created. Just to gain power and use religion for personal um, uh, gains. So, of course, it's very normal, very natural to find plenty of commonalities. But Islam did not shy away from saying these are the problems we have with this tradition. We cannot call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala three gods in one. We cannot play with the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. cannot change it. And the Quran actually identified the point of agreement and also talked about the point of disagreement and difference. So here the Prophet وسلم, said that we have more of a right to Musa than you. So he fasted on that day and he ordered everybody to fast this day. But some said, Ya Rasulullah, the Jews used to celebrate this day and fast this day. And then what he said, وسلم, he said that Inshallah, next year, I will fast the ninth and the tenth. And why is that? If it's the same God, same message, we believe in Musa السلام, we believe in the Torah, Allah revealed the Torah to Musa as part of our faith. We have to believe that Allah spoke to Musa السلام. If anybody rejects this, he's not Muslim. We all know that. The Quran clearly talked about this. Right? But the Prophet وسلم, also said to the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, Fast a day before or a day after. So fast the 9th and the 10th or the 10th and the 11th. Why is that? It seems to me, Wallahu A'lam, that Islam wants to make the point of reference very clear. Commonality does not make us the same. Agreement on something does not make the point of reference the same. And this one makes or, or produces our own unique identity. That we are Muslims, we are one community, we have a point of reference, one leadership, that's Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who received the message from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the most authentic message from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that's the final message that abrogates any message that came before it. If there's any point of disagreement, we have our point of reference. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it seems to me that he was fully also aware of the fact that the weak used to imitate the strong. The colonized used to imitate the colonizer. And that's true. That's true. 
Now in the time of globalization, um, um, capitalism spreading its values everywhere. People are eager to imitate those who are strong. And Islam tells us clearly that don't just go with the crowd, don't imitate others. You don't need to because you have your own point of reference. Remember who you are. You are the best ummah produced for mankind. You should lead, show people how to live their life. And Islam never rejected the local traditions as long as they are, they are ethical. Of course, every community has its own culture, celebrations, holidays, the way they dress, the way they interact with each other. And again, Islam does not accept or reject wholesale. Islam selects. Sometimes Islam approves some tradition because they are ethical, they are good. Keep it. Keep it the way it is. It's good. For example, when Muslim came to Medina, you know, purifying ourselves after using the bathroom is part of our tradition. Arabs, because of lack of water, they used to use stone to remove any filth. But when the Prophet ﷺ came to Al-Madinah, he noticed that the Ansar, they use water. And Allah revealed this ayah that made the Prophet ﷺ ask about what do you do that Allah said about you, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Allah loves those who repent and those who constantly purify themselves. Allah is pure and He loves purity. He wants you to be pure. And the Ansar said, Ya Rasulullah, we do what the Jews do. Because the Jews use water to wash themselves. Because purity is important for them. Islam approved it. And this becomes an Islamic tradition. But it exactly, it's coming from the Jewish tradition. If it's ethical, in the same, in an agreement with the objectives of Sharia, Islam keeps it. And don't shy away from this. Yes, we got this from the Jews. It's good. Because the Prophet came to purify us. But when it comes to wrong or unethical tradition, Islam said, no, cannot accept everything others are doing. So this point of reference, building a community with a clear identity, feeling proud and strong, and attach ourselves to our roots, to our tradition, is what makes us Muslim today. And of course, living in America, we have so many holidays, so many traditions. And I know these questions come up every year. Can we celebrate this? Can we celebrate that? Again, we have an example, we have a model. Rasulullah Wasallam bringing Islam to al Medina, interacting with Jews, with uh, the pagan Arabs, who have very clear vision. We don't fully assimilate with others. Because we are so weak, we are so um, terrified. We want to be accepted by others. No, that was not the Islamic approach. Or we reject everything simply because it's not in our tradition. That's also a wrong approach. We accept what agrees with our values, our tradition. And we reject what disagrees with them. We have a clear identity, clear point of reference. We know who we are. We know what to follow. We just need to be strong enough, to be smart enough to identify the point of agreement and the point of disagreement, and to be clear about it, and not to be shy about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds in this month of, of um, uh, Muharram, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to fast um, one or two days of this uh, month, the 10th, and the 9th of the 10th or, and the 11th, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our good deeds in this uh, holy month. I will call you as the Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, wa salatu wa salam wa ashraf al khalq wa al-mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, Allah wa malaikatahu wa salluna ala nabiyya, ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallu wa taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, wa ala ala Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim, wa ala ala Ibrahim fil alameen, innaka hamidun majid, ibad Allah, taqu Allah wa ati'u, inna Allah yamur al-adli wal-ihsan, wa ita'idhu al-furba, wa anha'an al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-bab. 
يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اللهم إننا نسالك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إننا نسالك رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمه امننا واصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا واصلح لنا اخرتنا التي اليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياه زياده لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحه لنا من كل شر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث واصلح لنا شاننا كله اللهم لا تكلنا الى انفسنا طرفه عين ولا الى احد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر الاسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وعبادك الصالحين اللهم اغفر وارحم وتجاوز عما تعلم انك انت الله العز الاكرم اللهم انا نسالك في يومنا هذا وفي شهرنا هذا وفي مقامنا هذا ان تجمعنا جميعا في ظل رحمتك وتحت ظل عرشك مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين اللهم انا نسالك الجنه وما قرب اليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب اليها من قول وعمل اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم